Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily for October 10th. I'm John McElroy, and here's the news. The race to develop autonomous cars is getting more intense, and there's no question that Google is the most aggressive company in pushing the technology. While automakers are concentrating on semi-autonomous cars, which is essentially adaptive cruise control with automated steering, or what they call traffic jam assist, Google is working on fully autonomous cars that need no driver input. Automakers say that traffic jam assist could be showroom ready in about three years, but in something of a bombshell, Anthony Lewandowski, who heads up the Google program on autonomous technology, tells me their technology is going to be ready in five years. Automakers scoffed that fully autonomous cars will be ready in that time frame, but others have scoffed at Google before, only to regret not taking that software giant seriously. You know, autonomous technology really got a boost in the last decade thanks to DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, whose mission is to push quick development of new technology. Now, DARPA is offering a million dollar cash prize to whoever can come up with the design for a new amphibious infantry vehicle. Of course, the military loves acronyms, so this one is called FANG, Fast Adaptable Next Generation Ground Vehicle. But the real point of this exercise is to develop collaborative design tools and procedures. It's all about dealing with complexity, and if you want to throw your hat into the ring to win a million bucks, check it all out at the website, vehicleforge.org. Honda is going to give customers who purchase a new natural gas-powered Civic free fuel. The company, along with Clean Energy Fuels, which is the largest owner of public CNG stations in the U.S., will give customers a $3,000 debit card to refuel at any of Clean Energy's stations. The deal is good through the end of the year or while supplies of the 2012 Civic natural gas car last. You know, it might sound like a pretty good deal, but keep in mind the extra cost of a CNG vehicle. The natural gas Civic is over 10 grand more than the base model. Well, uh oh, Mercedes is falling further behind Audi and BMW in the luxury sales race worldwide. According to Bloomberg, even though the company's global sales are up 5% through September to nearly 965,000 units, it has not kept pace with its German rivals. BMW sold 145,000 more vehicles in that time period. Audi sold about 133,000 more. Slow sales in China, an older lineup, and a lack of entry-level models is contributing to Mercedes' decline. General Motors named a new executive to head up Cadillac. Robert Ferguson is the guy, and his title is Vice President, Global Cadillac. He'll be responsible for sales, marketing, and advertising, but I find this a curious move since Mr. Ferguson has no experience in automotive sales, marketing, and advertising. Up to now, he's been a lobbyist for GM and AT&T in Washington, D.C., but he was CEO of SBC Enterprise Business Services, which was a large sales and engineering company. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is warning consumers of counterfeit airbags. NHTSA is unsure of how widespread the problem is. Only vehicles that have had their airbag replaced in the last three years and were not replaced at a new car dealership are affected. NHTSA tested counterfeit airbags and found most didn't work at all or only partially worked while well, some of them threw out shrapnel on deployment. If you wonder if you've got a counterfeit airbag, you're going to have to take your vehicle to a reputable repair facility or dealership to have it inspected. Hey, coming up next, it's time for You Said It. 
Clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Why? Higher take rates, lower cost of ownership, longer range and better fuel mileage, lower CO2 emissions. Clean diesel, good, economical, functional. Bosch, invented for life. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Kit Gerhardt says, Infinity wants to supply engines to Red Bull F1 team? Infinity is Nissan and Nissan Renault are the same company, so all it would take is very simple badge engineering for Red Bull's Renault engines to become Infinity engines. <laughs> and all I can say is b -b 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 bingo. 14L Diesel was amazed at our report that Volkswagen employs more people than GM, Ford, and Chrysler put together with another 86,000 people thrown on top of that. He asks, is this all VW passenger car or does it include commercial vehicle operations as well? Also, the degree of vertical integration can make a huge difference. Look at how much the big three have shed with Delphi and Visteon. 14L, yeah, that does include the entire VW group. And you're right. It shows a much higher degree of vertical integration at VW. But this also proves that outsourcing does not necessarily make you more efficient. VW's proved that. Lex says, what about doing a broadcast from an actual vehicle assembly plant? You can chronicle a vehicle from pre-assembly to assembly all the way to finishing and inspection. This would be fascinating for us hardcore auto enthusiasts. <laughs> wow, what a great suggestion. I really like that idea. We're going to have to do that. Ruffy John says, this may sound a bit strange, but I always welcome the higher fuel prices. For one, it'd make it more cost effective to drive electric hybrid vehicles, and it would finally force consumers to choose the right size of vehicle for them and their families. Ruffy, I think this is about the first time in my life I found someone really in favor of higher prices. Blue Oval Blood wonders, why aren't we making ethanol from sugarcane like Brazil is? See what Candace has to say about that Thursday. He's referring, of course, to Candace Wheeler, GM's foremost fuels expert, who will be our guest on AutoLine After Hours on Thursday night. But I can actually answer that. The United States has lots of sugar cane. Florida, Louisiana, Texas, and Hawaii grow vast amounts of sugar cane. But the United States has one of the highest import tariffs on sugar in the world. Americans pay about twice as much for sugar as the rest of the world does. Making sugarcane is so profitable for sugarcane growers, they have no interest in the ethanol market. Speaking of ethanol, Jesse says, E85 ethanol in general is a big fraud being perpetrated on the American driving public. It may have made sense back in the 70s, but brother, we ain't there anymore. Dump all of it, period. Well, I guess Jesse is not aware that the EPA mandates the use of ethanol in gasoline because it is the only approved additive to reduce emissions. Ethanol has 30% more oxygen in it, and that makes it burn cleaner. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments, and please keep them coming. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.